What is up guys, it's Troy at The Full Setup back with another video for you and today I'm going to show you how to overclock the RTX 3070 to between 2050 MHz to 2150 MHz on your core and to also take the memory to sort of above 16 to 16 gigabits per second and up. Now as always with all of these videos, you know I do always like to say to you, you do take it at your own risk but I've been uploading um, videos on overclocking NVIDIA graphics cards with MSI Afterburner for probably over five years now. Hundreds of thousands of views on some of them per video with lots of comments. And as always, I love it if you can share your scores and also, you know, put the model number in the description below so other people can use that as a baseline sort of test and score. So I'm going to show you how to do all of that in a second. Now, one thing I always like to say at the beginning of these videos is firstly, I like to waffle on anyway. Um, and secondly, they they are quite lengthy because I know a lot of you, you might have already overclocked and you just want to see the scores. You just want to see the numbers. But I always like to take these videos from the approach that, you know, it's the first time that someone's done it. And obviously, you know, I want to just go through all the steps, you know, sort of as much as I can within as much detail, but, you know, not overly showing too much. So anyway, let's have a little look at the system then. So this is the PC that we are using today. OK, so I've got a Ryzen 5600X. It's a PMY RTX 3070. Um, this one is actually a reference spec design. So it's only got, got no factory overclock on it. So it should, maybe might allow a little bit more headroom, which we'll talk about in a second as well. 16 gigabytes of RAM, loads of RGB. We've got some capture cards in there as well. B550 Tomahawk uh, motherboard. And how cool is this thing? The little Davoom thing as well. So, yeah, this is more just a test of my uh, multicam stuff so let's get down to the nitty gritty then okay that one didn't work <laughs> just went to a black screen for a second then so this is the first time that i've actually been using the multi cameras and the stream deck as well so then there's a couple of things that you're going to want to get installed though so msi afterburner is the program that we're going to be using to overclock the graphics card with today okay so that's one program you want to install that also comes with this program called river statistics tuner is that what it is yeah river river tuner server here oh no that's let's just put that so it's under my face and that's what's doing the overlay 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 here which is going to show us all our specs now when you first install it yours isn't going to look like this but as long as you've got stuff like gpu usage you know seeing all your clock speeds and stuff like that but if you did want to watch some videos I think it's Wolfgang makes some very good in-depth videos on how you can like fully customize all of this overlay for you as well. Now, you're also going to want to install this program. So this is Heaven Benchmark. I don't know if I mentioned that. Um, it's a bit of an older one now. So you definitely want to test with some other games afterwards. Validate your overclocks with some other games. One that I normally use as an over um, to validate my overclock is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I'll generally run sort of five to 10 runs of that. And if I get a crash, I know that I need to back it down a little bit. Now you're going to want to run it as maxed out settings as you can. I'm not running it quite maxed out today as because I've been suffering from some encoder overload issues in OBS. So just um, backing down the settings a little bit is making sure that this isn't a stuttery mess. So some of the first steps that I want to show you are actually settings inside msi afterburner so i don't have start with windows or start minimized okay now all gpu overclocks are software based okay um and the one thing you don't want to do is push it too far and crash your system i've had this happen once or twice to me in the past and i've seen people comment it as well where they haven't followed this step in previous videos and what can happen is you can boot your pc up and it reloads the overclock and it can crash your system again and especially if you've got super fast drives like NVMe drives, you're almost rushing to get down here to kill the process. So I just have it start, you know, I just start up Afterburner when I want to start up Afterburner. Now, there are a few other bits as well in regards to voltage unlocking. You may well want to tick these on. We are going to tweak the voltage a little bit today, but you'll probably get the same results without doing that. And if you don't get options for sort of power limit and voltage if you already are an msi afterburner user what you might find is that if you've got an older version it's not going to give you some of those power limit um, unlocks and stuff so just get yourself updated to the latest version i'll put links in the description to all of this now the first thing i always do before i overclock is actually set my fan speed you've got a few options here you can have auto or you can click the little settings tab and then what that will do will be your own custom curve but what I actually do is set a fixed fan speed because the way that NVIDIA GPUs work, you can see the boost clock here. It's 
it's tied in with your temperatures. So the problem is, is if you max the fans out to 100% and then set yourself a really tasty overclock, but then decide you want to turn your fans down, you may well cause some crashes there. So what I do is set my fans to the max that I ever want to hear my graphics card. And on this one, it's literally like 60%. That's all I need. That's audible now. So what you would do is you would set that speed and then you would just leave it sort of five or 10 minutes. So you can sort of see the clocks where they go. They're slowly creeping up a little bit as temperatures go down. I'm just going to blast this a little bit to get it a bit. Let's just cool the GPU down. I don't really want all that fan speed. As you can hear, there's the coil one there. But you can see as the temperatures drop, the clocks are just slowly moving up. Okay. So I'm going to go back to 60%. So that's what I do is set my maximum fan speed that I want from them. You can still then go in afterwards and, you know, do some curves and stuff. But it just gives you a good baseline to run with and then just run it for a few minutes. Let your GPU sort of normalize. Okay. So the next thing you're going to want to tweak is the power limit. Just max that up. Do a little tick. And as you can see there, we just got a little bit more performance there from adding a little bit more power. So next up, then we're going to want to adjust that core, that core clock. That's what we want to push. Now, every RTX 2070 from all the reviews that I've read online are all going to overclock between 2050 and 2150 megahertz. It's pretty much the same for most nvidia gpus at the moment that's about their ceiling obviously you're going to get some golden samples and then there's water cooling as well but that's that's sort of where you're going to want to go to so because this is a reference one you can see my boosts aren't going to be as high um so you might find that what you need to add here could be less you know some cards that are going to have super beefy coolers on them with loads of power delivery might already be very close to that already so it's going to be less that you can add it's, it is just going to completely vary but generally on all NVIDIA GPUs, you can normally add 100 megahertz. So I'd say that's a good start. But if you're a bit cautious, start with 75 megahertz. So we're going to dial in 100. I'm going to see what happens. And there we go, 2070. But again, you're going to want to let that normalize for a bit. OK, you're going to want to run that for a bit because you might find that, that drops down to 250 or 220 after 10, 15, 20 minutes. Like I said, with every five degrees that you add to the um, temperature of your GPU, you drop down sort of core frequency. Now, getting the final bit out of my card, this is where the core voltage comes into it. Now, from RTX 2000, they sort of nerf this voltage bar a bit. It's more of a bit of a placebo bar. Um, but again, as you can see here, the voltage that we've got coming through here is more than safe. Let's see, nothing really happens going on but that's something that i've had to add is like plus 50 on the core voltage now tweaking in here i was able in some games to run like 130 150 and then i'd get a crash in the odd occasional game so what i um ended up with was 125 is where i went for that's what i needed and you can see it's 2100 here it might drop a bit and again it varies for me in games as well so some games that run with 2100 plus would be like battlefield that one actually runs to like 2 2125 for me tomb raider drops down to about 270 260 so it's all going to vary on how much you know th these clocks are dynamic even though you're dialing in settings they're still going to move up um, and they're going to move down now one thing as well is if it crashes while you're tweaking this up um you tweak a setting it's always worth closing heaven and then reopening it with those settings applied close msi afterburner as well reopen it apply the settings then open heaven sometimes dialing in settings while heaven op is open is going to cause crashes as well which is why i'm not going to push the gpu too far today because we're also doing all the recording on the gpu as well this is why i love nvidia because you can just do all of this at once it's great so that should be your core frequency okay and i'm going to talk a little bit as well about you know setting some different ones with profiles in a second now the next one's memory this is actually super easy so this GDDR6 is clocked in at 14 gigabits per second. Pretty much all GDDR6 is going to run at 16 gigabits per second. Maybe start at 750. Okay, so anyone that's new to this, you might see it only says 7,000 megahertz because it's double data rate. So that's actually 14,000. So that's 14 gigabits per second. So this is why we're going to add 1,000. Just going to add that straight on because I know that this can run it. I've actually been able to push this to like 1500 on the memory, but I ran some benchmarks and there was just like zero, zero performance uplift. So I just thought, you know what I mean? I might as well just have my memory running, you know, a bit less. But anyone that's looking into mining as well, 
Another thing that I did was I ran it at 1200 megahertz and then I took about 125 megahertz off the core. Um, and that looked like when I uh, dialed it in just on settings, just to have a look, um, did increase revenue a bit as well. And obviously save some power consumption. But that's about it, really. That's everything that you need to do. Now, down here, you want to be able to save it. OK, so you click save and you select a profile. So there we go. Profile one. Save that. So now all I have to do is go bang. I'm back to stock. Want my profile set number one tick it. OK, you can set this all to start at launch if you want it to start at launch. But this is just how I like to go with it. And another thing as well that you could do is you could save a second profile. So let's say I just have the odd game. I'll talk about a couple of games. PUBG seems to always be one when I used to benchmark that one. I'd always have to drop my um, overclock by about 25 megahertz. So we're going to set one at 100. I'm going to tick that one in and we're going to save it to profile two. There we go. So now I have profile two. And then I can switch back to profile one. And you could even do the same with the memory as well. You can have a few different profiles in. So you could have your absolute balls to the walls overclock. If that doesn't work in a game, you know, set the one that's a little bit more safe and a little bit more conservative. Anyway, that's it from me today. Please do share your scores in the comment section below. I'll be very interested to see what you've got on different models. And I'd be very interested to see what scores you got on maybe a Vision, a Gigabyte Vision or an Asus Dual because that was the 3070 that I wanted. But, you know, as it is with the GPU crisis at the moment, you've just got to get what you get when you can. Anyway, if you like the video, leave a like. If you dislike, leave a dislike and I'll be back with some more content very soon.